going. Well, everybody, welcome to the final chapter of Women in Golf Week here for with Chats with Coach Doug. This is, uh, I'm so very honored. I've got uh, four uh, who I consider absolute rock stars in our PGA of Canada. Uh, we have uh, Ashley Zabrick, uh, Director of Golf from the Shaughnessy Golf and Country Club in Vancouver. We have my good friend, Kerry Moffitt from uh, Mayfair Lakes Golf and Country Club, as well as the assistant coach with the UBC Women's Thunderbirds golf team. Amanda Minchin from Esteban, Saskatchewan, uh, who is the GM and head pro and also does most of the coaching at the, help me with the initials, I, can, I never put them in the right order. <laughs> TSNM, it's a, it's a company, naming rights, TSNM, Woodlawn Golf Club. Woodlawn Golf Club. And yep. finally, from up north in Muskoka here in Ontario, we have Jacqueline Miller, the new director of golf at South Muskoka. And I want to say thank you very much to all four of you for joining us here to finish off my week of uh, profiling uh, women in golf. And I think uh, it's a fitting way to end with uh, our own country's profile of four women who are in great, amazing positions, considering 5% of the complete membership of the PGA of Canada are made up of women. And looking at you guys, I'm so very you know fortunate to know all of you, but also uh, see how you guys just keep trending. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. So not like for the like seven last seven weeks, we've been living in like a, what seems like a movie. Uh, you know, it's, it's really unprecedented times. Uh, I really think, you know, between quarantine, social distancing, you know, lockdowns and, you know, all this uncertainty, right? It's, you know, we really saw a conscious effort from our PGA. In, in, in conversations with my friends in the, in the PGA of America, um, we've been kicking ass in terms of like both provincially and nationally in terms of keeping our, our membership engaged. Um, have any of you uh, participated in any of the programs or anything that they've done? And if so, what have you guys done to keep yourselves busy and up to speed and maybe improving yourselves over this time? Let's start with you, Carrie. Well, um, in terms of what have I been doing to improve myself, <laughs> I've been in lockdown for pretty much eight weeks. So I've been in these four walls for two months. Um, it's been an interesting experience to be alone through all of this. But one of the things that I, I think that I've taken away from these eight weeks is this kind of camaraderie of people like for some reason within these four walls I ended up like on your Instagram live Doug and then Mark Crossfield's um his platform and you know our UBC team won team of the year and so many professionals reaching out to make sure that we're all doing okay like Glenn Kandary and it's been pretty cool so you know it's it's an interesting thing to spend this much time alone, but in a weird way, I have not felt alone. That's great. That's really cool. It's great to see everybody come together and check in on everybody. So how about you, Jacqueline? I, I know you have a young family, uh, and uh, what have you been doing to, while juggling uh, the, the young man on, on one hand, uh, you know, doing to uh, keep yourself in that new, you've got a new job. So, I mean, uh, that's, you know, it's kind of exciting for you as well. Yeah, so just been doing um, a couple Zoom calls a week and just, it's interesting hearing about, you know, like what other clubs in the city are doing as opposed to what we'll implement up here. Um, so I'll start back at work on Monday. So I haven't been in yet. Um, so I've just been keeping up to date with Mark and kind of going over like some policies and procedures that we'll put in place there. And, you know, then I share with what the clubs down in the city are doing just so we can kind of go back and forth and um yes every day is is a busy day with benjamin he's sick so he uh he keeps me on my toes and you know we're mostly outside every day just to kind of stay sane <laughs> cool well it's an interesting point because similar to you ashley you have a young family as well and at the same time you're in a new role as the director of golf at Shaughnessy. So, you know, we have uh, two, you know, very great big roles here for both of you in different provinces, but uh, at the same time, balancing the family thing with all this, uh, yourself, have you, uh, you know, have you found yourself uh, moving into this new role and also anything you've been doing to help yourself? Yeah, for sure. So it's almost like we opened up a new business at Shaughnessy 
Uh, we've created an online golf shop during quarantine. Uh, we had members of our team volunteering with our course and grounds crew. So to echo Carrie's point, like the camaraderie has just grown um, substantially in all areas. And I know even our PGA of Canada had a great um, initiative where they kind of reached out to our board. I'm uh, a VP on the PGA of BC board and we all got a list of basically 40 members uh, to check in on and see how they're doing and just to reach out and make sure everyone's doing okay and sharing ideas and what everybody's been doing with the time off if you're working from home. Uh, so it's, it's actually been very, very, very busy. Uh, our golf course has reopened as of April 27th. And for the first time in my career, we have oversubscribed lotteries um, almost every second day. So the membership is so eager to get out, enjoy the fresh air, go for a walk. They want to change the scenery that uh, we're seeing numbers that we've never seen before. Um, you know, close to 300 people applying for 240 spots. And uh, we're not alone, like Capilano, Marine Drive, all the local private clubs uh, that we've been sharing information and everyone's experiencing the same thing because people don't have much to do. And yeah. it has been a really amazing uh, break for, for a lot of people. Well, I think it's a really interesting point. Um, one of my friends said to me, he realized like two weeks into this, just how little he was at home. And, and that being at home now has really changed his thought process, right? And, and I mean, as a parent, uh, or, you know, like it's, it's just being around. I mean, Carrie, you've been in there for, for a long, you've been in your four walls for a long time. But, you know, so it's really about how we change our way of thinking. So out in the Great Plains there, uh, Amanda, you're, you're, like I said, you, when I say you're juggling, I mean, you got a lot of roles in your job. Um, what's been your kind of approach with this? And, and have you done anything to, like, have you reached out, have you been talking about your, with your fellow uh, constituents in, in, in Saskatchewan? Or how's that been going? Yeah, so I, um, you know, like Ash mentioned, I'm VP of our uh, PGA board and, and actually moving into president here in a couple weeks after they do the national. There you go. And Thing because our president Jeff Chambers joined the national board so and then I've been heavily involved with our NAGA group our NAGA allied group so that's been very um very educational and in, in learning how to speak to government and and all that so I've definitely learned on top of everything else uh, a lot of things over here I've been very lucky that I've been able to, I get to still come to work and I was able to come to work just because there was only five of us <laughs> managers yes and um, you know, I spent a week working on the on the grounds crew, which was fun, and I haven't done for 15, 20 years. And um, yeah, and, and I think like everyone's mentioned, um, you know, like our PG of Saskatchewan, we have our own we we have our own chats now, our own Facebook group. Everyone's sharing ideas. Everyone's talking. Um, and I think obviously we we maybe are wishing the circumstances were different, but I think this will be such an evolving um we're changing our relationships and making them stronger right and like you know i think there's uh, there's some some pros that you guys probably have them in your province that you maybe don't see they don't, maybe don't play a ton of events you don't you know they're in their own world and that's fine and now all of a sudden it's like hey who's who's that guy who's where you know and, I mean, you guys, and you guys are in much bigger zones i mean we're we're very small tight knit you know everybody knows everybody there might be the one odd guy where it's like hi i don't even i've never met him before now all of a sudden he's on the facebook you know page chatting away asking questions so well do you, you know think that's a really good point you know it's because the chances of me being able to get the th four of you in front of a zoom call at two o'clock in the afternoon eastern you know uh, 11 o'clock uh, pacific uh on a friday afternoon a friday is second you know like what are the chances of that at this time in May, right? Zero, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's interesting how a global pandemic has, has really created that sense of, um, um, I would say communication, um, a little bit more, everybody's a little less rushed, right? Because what are we doing? And everybody actually is, is caring. I, th I, I get a real big sense of care across the board, right? And I really find that so many people um, I've, I've FaceTimed and I've, I've Zoomed with more of my colleagues that I, I, I would have a quick call with on the way home from work. And it's really amazing thing because seeing people 
makes a big difference, right? And being able to have those connections, especially in, like Jacqueline, you're, you're starting a new role at a new place. You don't know a lot of the people, right? And you've got Mark Yakis, yeah. your DM, who's a great guy and, you know, awesome person. It, it's like you have to build these connections and how can you do it when you're social distancing, right? So this right. is amazing how this stuff really helps us. So here's a question. This is a really interesting statement. Um, so I had on Wednesday, I had Leslie Hawkins from Adidas Golf Canada on. Uh, it was a great chat. I mean, some interesting stats that came out of this was that uh, only 4% of women in sport earn the top dollar, endorsement dollar. Uh, it's a really kind of an interesting point. And part of that is, is Adidas uh, focus because they want to have ambassadors and they want to have alignments with athletes, women specifically, okay, because they feel it's a great for their brand. Have you guys encountered in your golf any brands that recognize that and do something similar? Just a question. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rome from Sun Ice has always um, supported me, like since I moved Jerome? up here. Yeah, so Jerome's great. Yeah. Yeah, um, and now um, Jimmy from Adidas has has put me uh, on his team this year, which is really nice. So, yeah, I mean, and then Mike Doyon from Nike, he was great too. So I've been lucky to to get a couple people for sure. How about you? Uh, anybody else, Ashley? Yeah, I've I've always been really lucky, and the reps have been so generous because they know there aren't many females, and when we're wearing their brand our members are asking, well, what are you wearing? I want that. And uh, we're ambassadors every day when, when we wear something around our club. Um, so I think we've been really, really lucky with all the BC reps. Cool. How about you, Carrie? Did anything from the team aspect, um, where does, what does the team wear at UBC? Uh, it, it switches every year. Um, you know, we've, we've worked with FootJoy, we've worked with Sun Ice. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I would say sometimes it's a bit of a challenge because when you're outfitting a team, you know, you're outfitting 10 players plus coaches and multiple pieces. So it's, it's a bit of a big act when you're trying, when it's one person, it's one thing, but when it's 10 players and, you know, seven or eight pieces, that, that starts to become a bit bigger of a, so what we've done is we, we, we're just lucky, same thing, you know, Sun Ice has been amazing with us and, um, that's probably one of our biggest, uh, supporters and, uh, yeah, we'll, we take what we can get. How about you, Amanda? Anything in the, in Saskatchewan that, uh, that, that looks after you, you and, uh, some, anybody else? Well, I, you know, um, I, I think all of our reps do a great job. Um, Sun Ice comes to mind again here. It sounds like it's a common theme. They, Sun that's Ice cool. is like, you know, I, I don't want to speak about the other people, but um, Sun Ice is really one that contacts me all the time and always offers to do ladies night first, which I think is very cool. Um, you know, you might not definitely maybe wouldn't have had that five, six, seven years ago where there, you know, it was always the focus on men's night or, or uh, tournaments or that thing, but they always call and say, what can we do for ladies night? Same with Puma. Um, really, that's really. Great. Yeah. Yeah, and I really pay attention to that. So I, I think that's great. I think that's awesome. And, and they're all, I mean, they're all amazing to me. Um, As it should be. You know, it's, it, it's a very interesting point because it was just a very interesting statement that she brought up. Um, I did a little bit more digging and it was really interesting because I did this cool stat and it's like from the women athletes that are their ambassadors, uh, they put out some, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 74,000 impressions for, um, you know, for social media which resulted in somewhere in the neighborhood of like it eventually worked down to the fact that the dollar revenue, if they spent that in retail, like marketing dollars, the dollar revenue was the equivalent of $9 million in revenue. In, in like, that's how much their value was, which is really interesting because it's obviously you partner with these and you, you see the value in this. And, and this is why I, I find it so, you know, in, interesting that only 5% of our, our, our PGA are women. And I think that there's a real opportunity here to help grow that. And I have another, I have a question on that, but I wanna get into this question on stability. 
you know, we've all been really used to having a lot of stability in our operations, uh, our clubhouse, our pro shop. We know our operations. We know our clubhouse. We know how they're going to run our ranges and all that stuff. But, you know, it's basically been just flipped right on our heads, right? And it's just gone. So what are some strategies that are coming down that for you, either specifically for your club or you're following the baseline coming down from your associate, from both the PGA of Canada and your, your um, provincial boards. Anybody want to take that? <laughs> Carrie, I'm going to circa. Okay. Let's go with care. Let's yeah. go with, you said they're about to maybe open your driving range again. Okay. Yeah. And I know that when we first talked back seven weeks ago, it was a bit of a concern for you because of the way that people were behaving. They weren't really paying attention yeah. to the, to what they, you know, like it was a bit of a danger zone. Yeah. Have you guys collaborated on how you're going to change that? Or do you have any idea on how you're going to operate a range in a safe fa fashion now? Yeah. So I, I'm not, I don't want to quote every golf course in BC, but mm -hmm. I do know that a lot of the driving ranges are starting to open, but um, mostly just for warm up to for tea times. Um, and I also, so our range will be open most likely to um, eight mats, two tea times. You have to have, you basically, you have to be like nine minutes on the tee. And then we're going to open up a few more mats for private lessons for our instructors. Um, the policies in place around that will just be what are the touching points and how is it that we can do our best from our end you know how are we disinfecting the baskets and how do we limit the use to our uh, the actual ball machine and just any kind of touching point we're going to have a range attendant pretty much full time um and you know we're still we're to be honest i don't really know and this would be a question maybe to some of you guys i'm not sure how we go back to group lessons i don't know how i don't i don't know what that looks like i know how private lessons look like that's a that's a, a relatively easy social distance thing uh use of a little bit more technology that sort of stuff but when you think of you know summer camps with kids i don't have the answers for that yet i just don't no and i think that's an absolute totally logical explanation but that's an interesting point about you know how you guys are gonna have to you know disinfect everything, everything. Uh, amanda how are yeah. you guys prepping your course for something similar? Like what have you, what are the major changes you're going to have to find, you know, in a nutshell, so to speak? Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, we're, you know, we're very, very strict right now, I think because we were maybe the first province that came out and said that we could open. So I think they, you know, and they, and they gave us like three weeks notice, which at the time we thought was very nice, but <laughs> sure people are just like sitting there. Like, yeah. Lots of time. Yeah. No problem. But, when I look back on it and I think of, I look at Alberta and they gave them like two days, three days notice at first I thought, well, that's crazy. But now I see that makes sense. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously we're, for us, we're, we're sort of a semi private golf course. We have a lot of members, but we also have public plays. So we're, um, and a lot of that is mixed play. We have long-term members who play with green fee players. So um, in that regard, you know, communication has definitely changed. I wouldn't say changed, it's, it's ramped up. Um, you know, and uh, finding different ways to communicate with people. People, um, I just said it this morning, people are tired of reading, they're, they're tired of reading my, my emails. So, you know, now we're gonna have to start making videos and, and different things like that. And, you know, for me right now, you know, I don't, and I actually, what are the rules in BC? So they tell you, you, you can teach private lessons or it's up to the facility so okay at, Sh at shaughnessy we were closed from march 18th to april 27th was reopening day and during that closure our management team came up with a list of protocols and we we basically um, have different phases and things have been changing daily but we're we're pretty operational like we're close to fully operating at shaughnessy uh, we opened with the driving range, so we have eight stalls on our range. We're very lucky to have an open air grass range. It's very large and uh, we have the stalls numbered. They're by appointment only. We can monitor the traffic flow. Uh, wow. four, four warm up stalls that members can use 10 minutes prior to their tea time. So you, you had to implement all these new systems, like I said earlier, 
we opened a new business and that new business is evolving daily, weekly. Uh, things are slowly, slowly, slowly getting back to normal. We don't want to rush it. We want to make things as safe as possible, be responsible. Um, but the, the members are just so, so happy to be, to be here. <laughs> and We're free. It's like, every, it's like, oh my gosh, I get to be here. It's like really, it is a big relief. So yeah, and, and it's, you just have to be creative. I mean, there's so many different ways to offer a service. I mean, my retail manager is doing virtual shopping and people love it. I mean, it's retail therapy. They still want to have a new outfit when they come out here and we're FaceTiming members and we're engaging with them and we're having social distance golf lessons. I mean, we, you can be creative and still manage to, to operate. Um, we just have to go with the flow, I think. That's awesome. Uh, so Jacqueline, um, I know that the snow has finally left, you know, and everything's starting to unthaw up there in, uh, uh, up in Muskoka. But oh, no, it's snow today. It's snowing right now. Is oh, it no. snowing right now? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Great. So what are you, you know, what are you hearing um, down, the, you know, from both the, from the clubs in the city, like, uh, by the way, Ashley, I think that's an amazing uh, process. I, I, have people reached out to actually ask you guys and see a copy of your policies and procedures? Because I think that would be gold for a lot of a lot of clubs to understand how to operate that, you know. Well, that's the beauty of these Zoom meetings. Um, we've had weekly Zoom meetings with uh, the 10 local private clubs um, in the lower mainland. We've had a couple with professionals from back east and uh, yeah, we're definitely sharing information. There's live documents that are being emailed and, awesome. and we're here to help each other. Great. Sorry, Jacqueline, keep going. I apologize. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. The same thing, um, with the zoom meetings, like just again, like going with the private lessons, most clubs in the city aren't offering private lessons. Um, I think that we will start. I'm, I'll be the only one that teaches anyway. So, um, as long as I'm protected and so is, you know, the person getting the lesson, then I'm fine with that. Um, but I really like Ashley's ideas of the driving range though, like numbering the stalls and all of that. And then we also use buckets for the range. So again, you know, like how are we gonna disinfect those and make sure that it's safe for everyone? And then we talked about um, letting two people in at a time in the pro shop, but they have to wear a mask and a glove. So they're still able to touch the clothing um, and see what's in there. And then we'll have protective glass in the pro shop to protect us as well at the counter. Those are some great policy. I mean, you know what, again, it's so crazy to think that we have to operate and change things a little bit differently this way, right? It, just to exist. I mean, I love the creativity. And um, one of the things I remember uh, Leslie mentioned is that like five in 2015, Adidas basically got this creative think tank going with the whole company. Like they, they started thinking, how could they be thinking outside the box? And I really think for us as professionals, this has given us this opportunity to share and, and give, you know, best practices to see where we, you know, when do we have the time to do that? So it's a really interesting point that this pandemic has given us so much more, so many more touch points and interactions to actually make us a stronger association and really come out of this. I think golf is by far, uh, you know, the sport that's going to be uh, the one that everybody can turn to. Susie Whaley mentioned an interesting comment to me when I talked to her on Monday. They have seen a huge enrollment in junior participation in across the board in the states based on the fact that there's no school and they have no sports so they have to find a sport that their kids can go into so when carrie you mentioned that point about group lessons that is something i, I think is a major strategy and i think that this is something that we need to really get a hold of and understand because i i had an interesting thought i i thought that every kid you can do groups of four right but every single student that comes to your right? You go to the dollar store and you buy hula hoops and every kid has to wear a hula hoop. They do everything with their hula hoop. You can't <laughs> touch hula hoops. You can't get close to another hula hoop, but it's like their buffer, right? And you can also play it up like, hey, listen, you got to, if you want to go get more golf balls, you got to take your hula hoop, walk over, put it down, right? Stand in your hula hoop, scoop your golf, you know, put it in your bucket, you know, that kind of stuff. I really think just something that, you know, other than, you know, attaching a, a cone of, you know, a buffer <laughs> cone on them or something like that. I think it's just a good, something of an idea. 
but it's going to have to be something like that that's going to change how we think about this coaching side of it. Yeah, it's especially in the group in the group setting with kids. I mean, the spatial awareness of kids, you just don't have it. So exactly. It's, it's really that's like asking asking your six year old to not get close to somebody, eh, Jacqueline? It's like, yeah, does he does he have a spatial awareness of that, or is he uh, like it's like uh, all over the place? Uh, he's not too bad. I've had to take him. He's been to the grocery store once with me, um, and that was too much. <laughs> like, there you go. I, I was so worried because he like you know he used to like just is used to grabbing stuff and putting it in the cart or like t like helping me push the cart, and so. I'm like, don't touch anything. <laughs> well, it rolls me right into my next question about family and, and, and also friends and, you know, our relationships we have with people and, and so on and so forth. So I've got, you know, you and, so Jacqueline and Ashley, you're both moms, right? And it's like, you, some people feel like mothers because they have to look after certain people of their teams, Carrie and Amanda. I'm, I'm sure you guys feel that way at times, right? But these relationships, it's, it's like, what is it, how is it for being a female professional in this role where you guys have to balance so much more? Because my friend Shannon Kelly talks to me about how she, when she comes home, you know, after teaching all day, she still has to be mom. And to put that hat on or to be the mother of your, your like, Carrie, I remember you've lamented about how your staff, you feel like you're their den mother at times, right? It's often a hard balancing act. How do you guys do this? Because we, you guys are always, you know, your moms and you're looking after certain things and there's so many things that get laid to you at the same time of doing your job. So let's start off with you, Jacqueline. How do you balance the, 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 the mom and the pro life? Uh, it's hard. So we moved here when Ben was just over one. It was just him and I. Um, so my boss at the time knew that, uh, that I was a single mom and said, and I just said, like, I need you to understand that I can't work seven days a week and I need like specific hours and like hours for you know like daycare and everything like that so I was really fortunate that he was understanding and understood my situation and then um just depended a lot on family and friends to help out so it is hard like you said you know you work all day and then you know have to make dinner then it's the bedtime routine and then you know you start all over again <laughs> It's like Groundhog Day at times. Okay. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so Amanda, hard. sorry, go ahead, Jacqueline. No, no, that's okay. I was just going to say it's hard too, you know, at the end of the day when, you know, all they want to do is play, but mm. there's stuff to do. And so, yeah, that was always hard balancing that. Well, it's glad that you, I'm glad that you have somebody, you know, and, and if Diakis, if Mark doesn't, you know, be understanding, let me know. I'll come up to, you know, uh, <laughs> Bracebridge and have a little chat with him. But, um, <laughs> Anyways, um, so Amanda, like, so you have a bro your brother, right? It's your brother that is the, is your brother or something? There's somebody. Yeah, I have, I, no, 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 I have a, I have a, I have a younger brother um, with Down right. syndrome. Uh, right, yes. My, my best friend. And, uh, exactly. Uh, it's been hard because I haven't been able to see him for eight weeks uh, because he's, he's in a, he's in a home setting and um, they're, they're treated um, obviously a little bit different. So I haven't been able to see him. He's not a big, super social guy. So getting him on a FaceTime is, he's kind of over it very soon. Um, but yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's, he's kind of my number one. And I don't have, I don't have kids. I think I'm probably, <laughs> I very much as a manager, as a GM, I try to, for my, my managers underneath me, they have, they all have kids. And my superintendent has two small kids and he's a very hands-on dad. And I, I think I just, obviously I think that's great and so I try to create the culture that you know what family first work second um I probably don't follow that for myself but I want to make sure that I'm <laughs> doing that for my employees and <laughs> I'll admit it I'm doing that for my employees and and because it is you know I can remember when I first got into this I mean I I don't think of myself as old but I I probably am Sorry, probably am running from the, um, um, if you want to call it old school generation. And, you know, I was taught you're a golf pro, male or female, you are at work seven days a week, um, you know, from whatever it might be, March 1st till October, whatever. And, you know, 
I, I kind of, I learned that maybe right, wrong and different, but I definitely evolved from that in seeing that that is not what our profession is, oh. nor should be. <laughs> I mean, it, and, and it's just crazy to think that that's what it should be. And, um, you know, I, yeah, so that's why I try to, my, my culture is family first and, and then we'll get the work done when it needs to get done. And I think that's a great way to look at it, you know, and, and that's why I asked this question because there's so many different ways that you, you know, those of you who don't have children, but you actually work in a business and you're looking after things that you understand how the family comes first. So Ashley, how do you balance? Cause your husband is also a golf professional, right? So you have double duty on, on, you know, and you're in a pretty big role. So how do you balance the, the parent life? Yeah, well, it might sound a bit cheesy to start, but I, being the director of golf at Shaughnessy is my dream job. So I know what I signed up for and I worked hard to receive the role that I'm in. Uh, I think I'm pretty lucky that my husband is in a very similar, the same role, director of golf at Point Grey. So we get it. We get the business. We tag team very well. Uh, you know, I, when I'm at work, I, I'm super organized. I'm a bit of a type A because uh, I know I have to be really efficient with my time. And um, when I'm at home, I'm 100% mom. And you know what, if my son, he's only two, so when he goes to bed, if I have to do emails after he goes to bed or before he wakes up, I have to do emails. I, I'll just make it work. Um, if I have to put in extra hours, I will. It's, it's the job that I wanted and um, I can't complain about being busy. I, I enjoy being busy, so. Well, that's great. I mean, again, it's, it's just, it's, it's from a different perspective of how you guys balance that life of, hey, we're parents, but we also work in the business. And if you have, a, if you have that person that gets it, right? Or if you're a single mom or, you know, it's, you need to have that support from your, you know, your GM to understand, hey, listen, you know I'm a rock star, but if you want me, this is what you're getting, right, with this. And it's really important that that communication is met because, again, you guys come with a, different, a little different skill set and a different, you know, and a different set of, um, I would say, things to, to consider. So, Carrie, you, like I said, like your charges, the people that, you're, uh, you, that you look after at, at Mayfair, right, and also the girls on your team, they're your family. Mm -hmm. And, and how do you, and, and that's the balance point. Like how do you balance Mayfair and balance your team while, you know, because, and balance yourself at the same time? I, I would say I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, honesty. That's great. That's fantastic. It's probably one of my weaknesses, if I'm being honest. It, uh, it's taken me a long time to understand the concept of, prioritizing myself even in the slightest. Um, so, and I think you're right, Doug, because it is, it's interesting because I am out here. My family's all East, my sister's in Nova Scotia. So my, like my family is Mayfair and, and, and CMAC and the, and the girls on the team. So, you know, I probably spend more time there than home just because they feel more like home than home sometimes. So, but it's a double-edged sword because when I'm always traveling with the team or I'm always with, you know, the, my extended family at work, it's, it can, it's a slippery slope. So it, I, I would say I'm not very good at it. So you got a little time management uh, uh, it would be essential. The work-life balance is a little, it's tough for me. Uh, the one thing that I have um, done for myself is mostly because of, you know, just, you know, getting older in this industry um, and teaching, you know, standing and teaching, my body was really, really, really suffering. And about four years ago, probably the one thing I did for myself was to hire um, a personal trainer who got me into this world of kind of taking care of myself physically. And now I can teach and I'm not in pain. So that I know if I can keep that momentum going and prioritize myself like just like twice a week, that makes a huge difference for me and my mental state too. Like being able to be any kind of physical activity, it just helps so much for the, the, the mental side of this, especially in this quarantine. You know, that's the, that's a really hard thing to do um, because I didn't even add into personal like 
looking after oneself, right? It's always family first and, and, and our jobs. And I can sympathize with you. I, I remember two years ago walking off the lesson tee in September when it started to die down and my body felt broken. And I personally started doing hot yoga and, uh, you know, I don't, you know, haven't stopped. And I mean, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the lifeblood for me to keep me standing out on the lesson tee for 10 hours a day. So we've all been golf professionals for a while and it's a really interesting point. Um, just recently with our new CEO, uh, Kevin Thistle, it, it, the PGA, he's, he, they've really changed the focus of, of professional development. And it's, it's noted is to now when you want to become a professional, you can really streamline your pathway really quickly. And it's very interesting because the PGA of America is just starting to do this. And they've been around longer than us. And, and they actually just started their teaching and coaching long-term player development stuff two years ago. Uh, and it's remarkably mirroring ours because they didn't know what they were doing. So an interesting point about this is these pathways give people the opportunity to get into this and, and really focus on where they want to go right away. What are you guys' thoughts on this new pathways compared to how we started in the business? I'll start with you, Jacqueline. What do you think about these new pathways to really focus on where you want to go? I think that it's great. Um, like you said, when we started, it wasn't like that at all. Um, I like that, you know, even if you have your class A, you can still go back and refresh or, you know, just update any specific pathway, I guess, that you're interested in and, and how to, you know, move forward in your career, whether it's to be a head pro or a director of golf or a general manager, like they have the tools there that, you know, can tell you, tell you what to do. So I think it's great. Cool. What do you think, Amanda? Uh but yeah, I mean, I, I'm very, I'm very impressed at, at, at what we've set up there. I'm very proud as to be a member of the PGA of Canada. I think Kevin Thistle is uh, obviously we've all, we've all met him. He's, um, he's, he's a high energy guy, and I think he's, uh, I think he's putting us on the map. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's very cool. Like obviously, again, I didn't, uh, I didn't come up through that, but I'm starting to go through those things. I, I'm going on. I love, you know, I love professional development, taking those things, especially in the winter. Um, and I think the jobs are evolving, right, in our industry so much. I mean, even now they're still, you know, they're still evolving. There's a ton of different things you can do to be considered in the golf business. And um, that's, that's a really good point. That's, that's a very cool. good point. I mean, um, back when I was an apprentice, I mean, you know, you had to go through your, you know, go through your apprenticeship and write your lab reports and write your class A and but like you had to learn all these different things. And then, you know, what was your pathway? Well, you know, the golf pro at that point was he taught, he fit, he did retail, he did, he did all the things. Right. And now while, you know, like someone like Ashley and a director of, you know, and yourself, Amanda, in, in, in these roles, you're, you're encompassing the whole operation of golf. It's, it's, you can find now when people, young people come across your, your, your kind of your vision, you can help direct them where they want to be. Ashley, what do you think are these, these pathways? How do, how do you think they're going to help shape our, our future? I would echo the comments and then I would add, when people are really passionate about something, they will have more success. So you're essentially allowing an individual to choose what they are passionate about. You're not making them take, you know, 20 courses on something they, they really have no interest in taking. Uh, so, I, I think that's a huge positive to uh, give someone the ability to choose which way they'd like to go with their career. That's a great addition. Uh, I think that's true. So very true. Uh, Carrie, what are your thoughts on uh, these new pathways? Um, I agree with Ash. It's the buy-in, you know, because you're not going to get, you're not going to get any of that passion if you can't get the buy-in. And I also think it's evolving to speak to that younger generation because you know it, they're different and that's great and you know they want choice and they want to feel more in control of what their their destiny what they want and i think that's great it's just it's to me it's just speaking more to that generation and what will help create that buy-in very cool uh so it's so funny when you do these lives eh I just got a text from my good friend, Scott McLeod, that uh, I was misquoted. Sorry, we were founded in 2011. All right, sorry, 1911. And yeah. the PGA of America was 1916. So I was just, uh, <laughs> sorry, corrected. Uh, I stand corrected, my apologies. 
Um, size 14, insert in mouth. There you go, right there. Um, anyways, all right, so a uh, little bit of fun time now. This is my kind of like favorite thing I like to do in these things. So um, normally there's five questions, but I thought that would take us way too long. So I thought I'd come up with three random. Now the advantage here is, you know, three of you are going to get a chance to think of the answer as I ask it to one person. So it's going to be a very interesting to see what you guys come up with. All right. So this is going to be, this is my favorite time, like I said. All right. So Carrie. <laughs> You're like, why are you starting with me? You always pick on me. <laughs> well, you know. All right. What's the title of the book about your life? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Start thinking, ladies. Oh. <laughs> Crown and diet. Crown and diet. There you go. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Ashley. That that's a really tough question. That's it is. I'll come back to you then. Anyway, okay, Amanda, come on. <laughs> um wow. Wow. I I'm embarrassed. I'm usually Wow, stumping you guys. This is awesome. Jacqueline, you got one? Uh, stay humble and grateful. Oh, I like that. That's great. Well, that's okay, come on. You, Go from you asked me a question. I don't like attention to myself, so you're asking me <laughs> to write a book about my life. But oh, there you go. There's the title right there. You're going to say, oh, yeah. it's not about me. It's all about yes. you. Yes, and how to like make people happy would be There you go. Okay, Amanda. I, I honestly, and this is, the, I don't know, I don't want this to sound however it might sound, but I, I, my, the name of my book would, would literally be Bring It On. <laughs> oh, cool. Nice. I thought, I was like, how to juggle 101. Well, yeah, yeah. bring it in. Yeah. Every, the, well, yeah, the one thing I love about my job. Every Let's day, throw it on you, Doug. What about you? Yeah. Throw it on me? Oh, yep. character over image. Okay. Nice. There you go. Thought about wow. it. Nice. Oh, yeah. It's a simple one for me, though. It's, it's pretty good. Um, all right. So believe it or not, last night, I asked uh, my, the young lady I was, I was talking to, I asked her a whole bunch of slew of questions. And she, I asked her to choose between a whole bunch of different sweets. She had no idea what a butter tart was. What? I said, pardon? <laughs> She's from Florida, right? Or actually, originally from Connecticut. Susie Whaley was her coach growing up. I was like, you don't know what a butter tart is? I was like... I just, it's a Canadian thing, I guess. Anyways. All right. So I'm going to give you a list of, a list of things. You have to, you can let me know which one is your favorite. Okay. Right. So, all right. So we've got, uh, we've got Skittles, Twizzlers. Uh, we've got uh, wine gums, gummy bears, Jube Jubes, and Smarties. Jube Jubes. All right. We got, who said Jube Jubes? Oh, uh, Ashley said Jube. All right. Jacqueline. Wine gums. Wine gums. Yeah. Good. Carrie? Smarties. Smarties. And Amanda? Smarties. Smarties. All right. All right. So this one is one of my favorite ones uh, because I really like the, uh, who, you got to think about this one. All right. And uh, Carrie, I actually think I asked this one. Maybe I didn't. I'm not too sure. But all right. So we have been time shuttled back in time and you are now going to be on ABC's Shell's Wonderful World of Golf. And you're being... <laughs> put up against a golfing legend all right so what i want you to do is i want you to tell me the legend you would like to play against in shell's wonderful world of golf and where you would like to take them on all right so i'll just give you a couple sacks all right let's go jacqueline um legends let's go sam sneed and pebble beach Ooh, that sounds awesome that would be cool <laughs> Ashley. Well, how do you not take somebody like Adam Scott with you to somewhere magical? Like <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Like <laughs> oh, man, Dave, I hope you're not listening. My goodness. He knows. Wow. He knows. Adam Scott, he's not even a legend. Like, I'm talking like, no, like but... at least Jacqueline comes up with Sam Sneed. Like, you know, an old guy. You're coming up yeah, with a guy who's still relevant. You got to throw, like, some fantasy into it, don't you? Okay. All right. 
I, we got, hats off to you. Hats off to you, Ashley Zabrick. That was a very good run. Okay, so Adam Scott, where? Just somewhere in Maui. Maui. You got to go to. You got to go somewhere tropical. Oh, okay, Maui. There we go. Love it. All right, Amanda. <laughs> She said Adam's got somewhere magical. Yes. <laughs> no, but I, if I took it back, I just have to put, it has to be Augusta. Like it would always be Augusta. Okay. There you go. All right, Amanda, who would you yeah. go, uh, who and where? Well, um, who am I going to play against? Like legend. So, I mean, I don't know if I, I want to play against Annika. Oh, cool. Great idea. And, yeah. And, um, oh, I, I think Pebble. I want to take, oh, I want to. Pebbles. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And I want her to hang out after and play a couple more rounds. For sure, eh? Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Carrie? Well, okay. I'd say you guys, you know, Adam Scott, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to go with it. You never, you and Ashley, you and Ashley can both take Adam Scott. <laughs> <laughs> We're both going to Hawaii. <laughs> On <Yes>. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine would be Payne Stewart. Oh. Um, I'm going Augusta. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. That, you know what? That'd be really cool. Um, I would probably go way back, but I'd probably actually, you know what? I'd like to take Lee Trevino. Nice. Uh, and I actually love to go play Pine Valley with Lee Trevino because the way he shapes, you know, the way he's just talking and, and all that stuff, he'd match my, my, his personality kind of matches mine. And I just love to, I mean, you know, I would tower over him. He still kick my butt, but it'd be kind of, you know, It'd be kind of fun to, to hang out with him for a while. So uh, those are great answers. Oh, my gosh. Ashley, you get high, high marks for that because <laughs> no one's ever gone down that road. So that was fantastic. I love it. It was love it. All right. So, you know, inspiring young women to follow in your footsteps is awfully hard. I really think, you know, this past week I've, I've really, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, chatting with, you know, with women leading – leaders in this industry and and really seeing how you guys have stuck it out and 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 rose to where you guys are today it's not been easy and what words of encouragement and what words of knowledge can you guys give young professionals who are in this business or maybe aspiring young women who would want to follow in your footsteps what words of wisdom can you drop it all right let's go carrie I guess the, the thing is like women get into this industry for exactly the same reasons that guys do. It's because we love the game and we want to share it and with as many people as we can. And so I think, you know, just knowing that we're, every, we're a lot more similar than, than maybe different in, in a lot of ways and just understanding that, you know, we all have a common goal. And what I would say to these women is, not so much maybe inspiring, but I mean, it, it's the checking in and just knowing, like having these girls know that they can always call you when they need it. You know, like just this year, Doug, like what you've given me with all like this right here, you guys, and you know, the Zoe, Michelle, Trillium, like all those connections. I just feel like I have my people and it's something I've never had in this industry and knowing that I could call any one of you guys and vice versa. So I, I would say so it's the having, it's the picking up the phone and calling them too. You know, when you say it's like, I'm here if you need me, but it matters more if, if I was to call, you know, one of the girls on the team and just say, hey, how are you doing? Let me know, I'm here. Versus just saying, call me when you, you know, if you need anything. It's really wow. reaching out. That's, that's fantastic and very, very poignant. I think, uh, it just goes to show you it's that communication thing. Right. And it's, it's, we're in the relationship business. You know, mm -hmm. we say we work in golf, but really realistically we're in the relationship business and, oh. and we're really about how we build and nurture those relationships with others. And I think that's a really great point. So Jacqueline, what do you think? Uh, what are some nuggets of wisdom you'd like to uh, bestow on some young, young professionals want to follow in your footsteps? I just think, you know, you, if you have your goal in mind, write it down, whether it's just in a book, whether you hang it on your fridge every day and you look at it, think that you just always, you can't lose sight of where you started and where you came from. And just remember, you know, to, to stay humble and grateful. I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned this whole time is just, you know, as women, we've obviously, you know, come a long way in this profession. But even when I started, it was just, 
you know, I would stand behind the counter and people would say like, who's the head pro? And I would say, it's me. And they're like, oh, I just assumed it was a guy. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I got that all the time and, but I never lost sight of what I wanted. And I always just followed, you know, I guess followed in other people's footsteps who were, who were, um, females and leaders in this world. So. Awesome. That's that, 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 again, that's great. You know, uh, you know, everybody should read your book, Humble and Grateful, because it's a really great story. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a really cool way to think about it. You just start writing after we get off this call. Okay. So, so how about you, Ash? What do you, you know, what, what would you like to, if you were standing in front of uh, young female professionals, what would, what would be your message? Yeah, I think the first thing is I've never thought of myself as a female golf professional. I'm a golf professional. And uh, we don't need to separate ourselves with that. Like Carrie kind of alluded to that. And um, I would also say build your network. So I wouldn't be in the position that I am without all of the professionals around me. So the more people you can talk to and meet and, you know, get mentored by, um, I would just really push for that because you learn some of the best ideas and you grow as a professional. Uh, just from conversations with other great pros in the industry. So I would, I would say that having success is like build a big network. It's such a amazing industry. I mean, it's like a family. So the people that we meet become really, really close friends. And uh, I, I wouldn't separate ourselves as females and males. I would just say you're a golf girl. You're a golf girl. That's great. I love how you just, you know, we're all in this together. And, and it really does. And um, I think it's one of those uh, really great points that you just brought up because often, and, you know, look at me, uh, you know, bringing all just women on this call and saying you're all women professionals. But my point being <laughs> is I wanted to show women in strength, though. So, you know, it's, it's a really great point because, because we really are all one together. And net, building that work, network is, is, is massively huge. And, I mean, the really cool part is, like, I got to meet Amanda and Carrie because of the Community Golf Coach Program with PJ of Canada and became friends with them, hanging out with them for a few days in, in Vancouver, you know, and, and we have that connection and, and, and it's a really great network and, and friendship. And, and so Amanda, one more thing, like to, you've heard some great stuff from, from these three ladies. What else do you have yeah, to add to this question? Love it all. Um, I mean, I, you know, I would say to people and, and it's hard when, if you say it to young people, they might not understand it, but uh, somebody once told me, you know, what are your core values? Figure out what your core values are, stick with them. They might change here and there, but and, and then make your decisions on life, whether it's at work or this, that, around those core decisions, and you'll never go wrong. Doesn't mean everyone's gonna agree with you on them, but as long as you're sticking to your core values, then you never have to question yourself. And that goes for men, women, across the board. But um, yeah, and I think uh, obviously persistency and a little bit of stubbornness can go a long way. <laughs> a little bit of stubbornness never hurt anybody, right? There you go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's really cool because it's, it, it reminds me of a saying I like to say to all my kids that I coach um, who play, you know, it's your game, your way. Uh, you know, it really, really is because you, you have to map it out the way you want to go. Um, you know, it, you don't have to follow uh, or stuff yourself into a box. Uh, and and it, I can tell by, by listening to all four of you that you guys have all, you know, you, you have all succeeded because you've done it your way and the way that you best see it forth that fits for you. And it's, it's just an absolute uh, wonderful, uh, I mean, this hour has just gone by like that. And uh, I really uh, can't say enough about thanking you all for uh, coming on, uh, offering up your knowledge, offering up some fun adventures and, uh, and, and possible trips with PGA superstars. And, uh, you know, I, I really, I really do. Uh, I really do appreciate uh, closing off my, uh, my week of uh, featuring women in, in golf with you for um, it's just been an absolute wonderful ride. Uh, and I thank you all for, uh, for participating. Thank you. Thanks for having thank you. You're very welcome. Um, I just like to add that if you guys just stick around for one second, I'm just going to stop the recording and do all that stuff. And then uh, we'll just go from there. Stop.